Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We have Crown Black introduced in 2010 by Diageo, owners of Crown Royal since the year 2000, the second owners of Crown Royal, the original owners from 1939 to 2000, Seagram's Distilling Company. <clears throat> okay, Crown Royal Black, 90 proof. Oh, forgot to put that in my notes. Let me do that right now. No, I was forgetting something. 90, 90 proof. Heir to the throne, 80 proof. As with most Canadian whiskeys. Okay. Real quick, Crown Royal Black, a rich and flavorful, a rich and flavorful blend of Canadian whiskey. All the signature smoothness of Crown Royal matured in charred oak barrels and blended at a higher proof for a richer texture and bold finish. So what makes this one different? It's aged longer at a higher proof and they age it in charred oak barrels as opposed to the non-charred oak barrels. All right. Rebel Spirits. Let's try this one more time. That's a book called Rebel Spirits. All right, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Rebel Spirits, Gardena, California. Let's see. Oh, Gardena, California. No, there's nothing. It's like defunct. Bought this at Walmart, 750 milliliter bottle. It was originally like 31 bucks and people were not buying it. Then they lowered the price to 15.65 and I bought it. Heir to the throne. It's got a crown, cross swords, more cross swords, two griffins. Uh, I write up about how it's aged in oak barrels, which all Canadian whiskeys aged in oak barrels. Ultra smooth. I didn't find it was ultra smooth. Product of Canada. It is an interesting bottle design. It has these dimples on either side so you can grab it better. Uh, heir to the throne, a perfect blend. Now remember, perfect, that means it can't be improved. A perfect blend of Canadian whiskeys, which have been carefully distilled and then matured in oak casks. Yeah, okay. Got a purple cap. I've literally seen no written reviews for this product ever. It's got a cork actual wood cork, but it's more like the particle board cork that somebody was talking about. Somebody online was saying, well, if you notice a lot of these corks is just little pieces of cork that's pressed together. It's not a true hunk of cork. I said, huh, hadn't thought about that. I don't know how they hold it together. It's got glue in it, some kind of resin. Okay, anyway, anyway, Well, I don't know when this hit the market. I know Crown Royal Black hit the market in 2010. Was it in honor of the royal visit when Queen Elizabeth went to Canada in 2010 and she opened Parliament? She was the presider at the opening of Parliament, which she does has done a few times when she was in Canada, but not often. Uh, it might have been. I don't think she's been... I think she did go back to Canada once since, but she's getting pretty old and seemed like the, the traveling was not, not easy on her. So now when, you know, they have Royal visits as Prince Charles or, or one of the younger ones, not the one that got fired for dereliction of duty. You know what I'm talking about, but um, the responsible members. Anyway, I'm not an Anglophile. All right. Actually, where's my glass? Okay, uh, 
I'm not anti-British, but you know, I'm not a partisan either for, by any means. I'm just a neutralist. All right. Oh, uh, well, you could see this one is dark and it's like tan. I guess you call that tan or copper. Yeah, copper, mahogany. I don't know. What do I know for colors? And this one is gold. It's gold, like most Canadian whiskeys. So I have to close my eyes. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I'm going to tell y'all right now. First, I was watching the video for Four Loco Fruit Punch. I, I did a review of it. You say, no, no, not that. Not the dark side again. Yeah, I know. I call them junk beers myself, junk products. Okay, you know, I get that. But uh, I had two cans in the fridge. I had already gotten ill because of the stinking uh, Four Loco Black. I was sick for 36 hours. And that is no joke. I felt bad. I'm spilling this stuff. Oh, I felt bad. All right. Have to mix them up again. Um, it's funny in a way because the four local black was pretty good if one would want to drink black lime flavored beer. Or I should say a black lime flavored beer based super high alcohol product, 14%, full metal jacket. Um, and it looks like antifreeze. Somebody said they're trying to make it look like Mountain Dew and taste like Mountain Dew. Uh, that's probably the case. I, I don't have much experience. I don't have a lot of experience with Mountain Dew. I have had it, but that's a high caffeine product, super high caffeine product. Uh, and that's what Four Loco used to be. You know, if y'all remember uh, back in 12 years ago. And I think the black was one of their first, and it does use natural flavors, natural black lime. You would, you know it's black lime. Um, I was at a grocery store yesterday and somebody told me, I never heard of a black lime. They have such a thing. I said, go look in the produce section. They got them. Oh, you never heard of it. I said they taste a little different. They're kind of strange. But um, so I drank that down, you know, and I was sipping on it. And then I was just like, kagoo to the world, you know. And uh, I felt so bad the next day. You say, it's a hangover, a hangover. I don't, I just think it made me feel sick. I just felt sick, ill. And I was like, oh, nah. I knew I shouldn't have played around with the stinking, rotten, good for nothing, four loco, trash, garbage, filth. This atrocity of mankind. But then I said, well, I got two cans left. I got the uh, fruit punch in, um, I think it's called strawberry lemonade. <laughs> I said, oh, man. But, uh, after, after a few days, I felt better. I finally got that black lime taste out of my mouth after about a week. Like literally for a week, everything kept wanting to taste like black lime. So I was like traumatized, had post-traumatic stress disorder from that. But I did, I did do the fruit punch a couple of days ago. Was it good? Well, uh, I mean, that's depends on what you would call good. In my opinion, there is no such thing as a good for loco. And I was watching that video and the guy was like, I'm going for loco. I'm going loco for the for loco. I'm going loco for the for loco. And he kept, he, I, he had me laughing, almost spit my food out. Just the way he kept doing it. I said, this guy's crazy. But he doesn't do videos anymore. He, he was a flash in the pan. But I thought it was funny. Going for loco, lo, going loco for the for loco. 
and it, it was comical, you know, but uh, yeah, so in my opinion, there is no such thing as a good for local. It's all trash, garbage, filth, and atrocity of mankind. But when the, within the context of what it is, you know what I'm saying, then we scored it appropriately. And that was only 12%, only, <laughs> you like how I said, only 12%. And I um, sipped it down very carefully over a number of hours. So I didn't feel as bad. I didn't, I, I did feel a little run down the next day from it. I said, if a person drank this every day, I think they would really shorten their lifespan. Then I was talking to this bulk merchandiser for Southern Eagle and Isaac Bush people who distribute for Loco. That's right. They got the contract. Um, he said, oh, yeah, the fruit punch. That's a good one. I say, yeah. But he drinks that stuff kind of regularly. I, I don't I don't get that, how, how somebody can do that. But uh, anyway, another time, another place. Okay, this smells like fermented and then distilled corn based. It, it's very corn heavy. You say, well, what do you expect as Canadian whiskey? I know that's exactly what I expect. A little rye and, 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 and that. Get some wood, some vanilla. It smells kind of rough cut. Like I, I expect air to the throne to smell. They talk about how smooth it is. I said, oh, I don't get, I don't see it. Now, when I did a solo review of it, it was fine. I gave it a good score. Solo, same thing with Gibson's Finest Rare. Solo, great. Wonderful. Enjoyed it. So happy, so happy. But boy, I tell you what, that doesn't mean much, I've come to find out. It's when you put it in taste challenges is when things begin to break down. You could drink a whiskey or a beer on its own, It'd be fine. You say, oh, it's fine. Probably be the case with wine, too. I've never done a wine blind taste test. But then when you put it in competition against other products, it'll expose all the badness that you didn't notice in a, in a, in a singularity, you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in isolation, I should say. But the blind taste test bring out the badness or contrawise bring out the goodness, you see. Uh... This smells similar, but maybe with a little darker application, meaning charred oak. <laughs> Those fumes of the whiskey always get to my nose. I got sensitive sinuses, let me tell you. And it is probably just physiological in my own DNA genetical thing, but uh, also it's the humidity and the mold in southeast Louisiana. It rains incessantly around here. And uh, it's very moldy. Everything's got mold on it. So uh, you pretty much just be having sinus problems living in Louisiana. Now you say, well, I want to go live in Arizona where it's dry. Well, okay, you could do that. Okay. Taste time. So initially, I think this is the air, but I'm not sure. You can see I can't because I got my eyes closed. So with aroma, there really wasn't any kind of great difference. Now in flavor, gave me that shiver me timbers taste, that shiver. And that shiver and that nasty little bite it's got to be heir to the throne because I know Crown Royal Black does not give you that nastiness. Crown Royal Black, $27.97 at Walmart right now. $27.97 at Walmart right now. I went around to other stores, checking them out. I said, oh, look, $30. $30, 30 dollars 30 I said, uh-uh. I'm glad I went to Walmart and paid $27.97. Well, I'm going to taste this black, but I know it's the black. I know it's the wise guy to be black. 
Well, yes, it is dark, charred. I mean, it's going to be dark if it's charred, right? It's charcoal. Charred oak, charred oak, higher proof. Hmm. Funny thing about this whiskey. It didn't really ever evidence that 90 proof. I don't know why I just didn't. Okay, here we go. Crown Royal, Royal Black. Is it better? Yes, yeah, way better. So clearly Crown Royal. Jeep and Footy says, good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, uh, uh, Caleb. Well, so the Crown Royal Black, as predicted, whipped up on the old heir to the throne. This is a, they ought to call it pretender to the throne because it has no, it ain't going to get on the throne. It's a tragic kingdom, Gwen Stefani. Auto. It's a, it's just a joke, really. Rebel spirits, who nobody ever heard of, got this concocted. They imported it, then they went out of business. They used to have a website. It showed all kind of whiskeys and gins and sake and rum that I never heard of. All kind of brands I never heard of. That doesn't mean they're bad just because you didn't hear of them. I mean, there's a lot of small, little, tiny companies. There's a lot of small liquor companies that, I mean, they make a little bit of money, I guess. Maybe Rebel Spirits didn't make any money. Um, and they put out marginal, like, obscure brands. And um, I buy them. Then I try them. And sometimes they're good. Usually they're not too good. But sometimes they'd be good, really good. And if I was just running after views, chasing views, I only do the major brands. Crown Royal, you know, you get hundreds of people watching. Maybe thousands. You do something like heir to the throne, you'd be lucky to get a few dozen people to watch because it's understandable. Nobody's ever heard of it. They're not interested in it. I'm the same way uh, as a viewer. But uh, I, I'm not really into that scene, you know, the scene of chasing and saying, you know, oh, please subscribe. Oh, I have to, I need validation. No. If you subscribe, you subscribe. If you watch, you watch. If you don't, you don't. You know, it's whatever you choose. Oh. Uh, Am I going to keep buying these obscure brands? Probably so. But it's kind of a lonely job out there. You know, I do the obscure brands and I get a few comments. and But then I'll bring in a big one like Jameson, you know, then the, the board lights up. I just did an obscure Irish whiskey. I got to post it coming up maybe Saturday or Maybe tomorrow. I can't remember the order I have it listed in. I bet you hardly anybody's going to watch that. Do hands. Got no website. Don't know where it's made, except we know it's Ireland somewhere. Got no age statement. It exists. I bought it at Walmart, and it turns out I paid $10 too much. They had it for $19.99. It's always $19.99. Oh, I'm sorry, $19.96. And they got it listed as Grand Dach. Grand Doc two hands, but they have they also sell a Grand Doc blend of scotch, so it's got to be related. The two got to be related. Uh, but Walmart over here did a closeout, a closeout, and they sold it for nine. Nine, I said, oh, I'll pay ten dollars too much, but I didn't know. Morning again, awesome dude says Dark Lotus. Watch two short ads for you. Oh, okay, thank you. Do you watch Jimmy Houston Outdoor? I never heard of it. I hit his wife had a stroke, seems to be improving. No, I, I'm sorry that. This lady got sick. I, I never heard of Jimmy Houston. Um, sun is almost up here. Yeah, it's coming up. I'm about to go walking. All right, so final assessment here. I mean, Heir to the Throne is not horrible. I don't want to overplay it, make it seem like it's worse than it is. It's not terrible, okay? But it's surely not really too good. And I don't know where the plastic cap went. Not to turn the light on, I might have dropped it on the ground. Um, it's not terrible. I lost my plastic cap for uh, oh, there it is. I had it back on <laughs> for the uh, Canadian clubs, probably in the cabinet fell off. Uh, it's not terrible, you know. Is it worth 15.65? Uh, probably, but yet. That's the closeout price. They had it for 31 bucks. I remember now, I remember, I remember it was $31 in a box. And I kept looking at it for a couple of years. And I was like, ain't no way I'm paying $31 for something I never heard of. 
Then when they closed it out, I bought it. So for 15 or $16, okay, all right, it's worth it. But I wouldn't pay more than that. But the whole point is, mute, is moot because you're never going to see it. Don't they make Kirkland brand beer? Uh, yeah, I tried one. Kirkland Light, and it was bad. Wasn't technically bad. It was a C minus, but may as well have been bad because I ain't never going to buy it again. He does a finish a fishing show and is now active on YouTube. He's had a TV show since the 80s. Okay. I just don't watch a whole lot of stuff. I'm about to try some Ching Tao later today. Should be interesting. Oh, yeah. Ching Tao is good. And the pure draft is even better, but try finding the pure draft. I stumbled across it. I really liked it. Sort of a Miller Genuine Draft type thing of Ching Tao. Talking about Miller Genuine Draft, they had the new packaging at Walmart in Hammond, Louisiana, with the sun, like the red sun and all, and the eagle. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to get this for my bottle collection. Eleven ninety eight is too much money, but I'll buy it. Come home, open the packaging. It's the old labels inside. I said, you dirty rats. They had a bunch of old labels left over and bottle caps, and they put the old bottles in the new packaging. Now, the new packaging was to attract people. See, I was over there Saturday, and they had a bunch of them on the shelf in the cooler. I went back the next day to buy it, and it had one 12-pack left. I said, whoo, good thing I came here now. But it's the old bottles. I said, all I did was throw away $12 because I wasn't looking to buy it. It's good. I drink it. I like Miller Genuine Drive. I always liked it. It was originally called Miller High Life Genuine Draft. But I said, oh, now I'm going to have to go buy the new label again. But I'm going to peek through the top because you know, got a little opening where you grab it. And I'm going to see if they got the new bottle caps. So I'm not buying. Well, you know what Anheuser Bush did a few years ago. Remember when they came out with the new King Cobra packaging? <laughs> they had so many. No, it was Hurricane I'm thinking about. They had so many bottle caps left over from the old packaging that they put new hurricane bottles out, but had the old caps. I said, boy, these companies don't waste a dime. I mean, they'll put an old label with a different cap on it, a new cap with an old label, a, old, a new label with an old cap. And they'll put the, they'll mix match the packaging. And I believe somebody on Alcohol Eggs was saying, uh, look at this. I bought natural ice with the old package. No, that happened here, too. It was the new package, you know, the black label natural ice. But when you tore it open, it had the uh, the old cans in there. I said, boy, boy, boy. Do I ever read any Kipling? No, I don't really read nonfiction. I'm, I mean, blah, 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 blah. I don't really read fiction, tell you the truth. I read uh, nonfiction. I like to read doc legal documents mostly. Uh, I'm about to try some. Oh, it was 39 up here. I'm glad I skipped it based on what you said. 39. Ron, you ever read? I always wanted to try the Kirkland beer. Uh, my experience is don't waste your time. But that was only one sample. Is there a reason companies use their beer base instead of vodka or other liquor for those flavored drinks? Um. I think it's because of some state laws that don't allow liquor based premixed. So to get around that, they just use beer base. It's the same thing. I mean, you wind up with a colorless, odorless base. This one is based on malt, you know, like the Four Loco, and the other one's based on spirits. I got one in my fridge I'm about to review today. Um, it's going to be a revisit. It's called uh, Cut Cut Tail. Cut something from San Diego. They used to be affiliated with uh, Ballast Point. And all it is is spirits mixed with flavoring, and it's a pre-mixed cocktail. This one is the horchata. You could do it with beer. Now, in Canada, in Canada, it's almost always spirits because they don't have that strict law, you know, like, oh, no, you can't mix. So they use vodka. It's probably cheaper, maybe. And they, and they add flavoring. So if you get if you get Mike's hard or eight percent in the USA, it'll be beer based. If you get it in, but they say that's in Smirnoff too. But Smirnoff says on their website, well, we use beer based, but in some states we use spirits, meaning what? 
those states don't have those strict laws, so they'll just sell it as vodka-based. And in other places, it's beer-based. And in Canada, it's always spirit-based, those coolers. Uh, you probably wouldn't be able, it would probably be almost impossible to tell them apart in a blind taste test. Except that maybe, 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 maybe you could pick up the malt base. You know, it, it'll have like a bread. It's just so slight. You say, well, vodka is made out of corn and uh, you can make corn bread. That's true. But when you taste bread, we know we talking about wheat bread or barley bread. All right. So anyway, Crown Royal Black is the easy winner here. There's no, not even really any competition. So if I had 10 chances to buy a whiskey and I could choose Crown Royal Black or Heir to the Throne, how many times would I pick Crown Royal Black? 10 out of 10, 100% of the time. Is this the best Canadian whiskey I've ever had? Uh, I would not go that far because I think the Canadian Club 12 year is a rival. They're both just as good one to the other. And the Canadian Club's three dollars cheaper, so maybe the Canadian Club is the best Canadian whiskey I ever had. I'm talking about the uh, twelve-year age, the, 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 the uh, limited edition. But this is great. It's great. Havana's great. Um, I got one more coming up, and it's going to be a joke. It, it'll be a worse blowout than this. It'll be a worse blowout than this. It's the Gibson's finest rare. 12-year age. Now, think about that. 12-year age Gibsons from Grant's, William Grant and Son, and it's going to get killed, destroyed. It's going to be a massacre. I'm telling you right now, I got the best deal in the history of the world on that bottle. When I tell you the price, you, you're going to say, I'm lying. I'm not lying. But it'll be a joke. It, the Crown Royal Black is so much better. That is almost even pointless in a way of doing the video, but I'm going to do it because I always do the full tournament. You know that. Uh, then we're going to go to the Irish whiskey, which people are going to be rolling their eyes like, why are you doing do hands, which ain't nobody ever heard of. I say, oh, well. Now, uh, last comments, then we out of here. Ronald the Riot, cheers, bucko. Cheers to you, Drewski Brewski. The Dixie Bass Man said, yeah, same thing happened to me today. I'm a fan of Miller Genuine Draft, and I had a coupon, so I didn't lose much, but it was still annoying not to get the new design for a higher price. Okay, so it happened to him. He bought the new package. He opens it up. It's the old bottles. But that's really great. Thanks, uh, Molson Coors. Or thanks, Miller Brewing Company, your subdivision. Seems a lot easier to make a pre-mix than a beer base. Uh, I really don't know if it is easier. You would think because you just buy commodity vodka. You know, they got these companies like Midwest Grain Products that put vodka out all day long or gin. But you, you're going to use vodka because got, it's got no flavor. And uh, I mean, they buy it in bulk, like a train load of it and a uh, train car of it, you know, and uh, you add the flavorings and then you got your thing. But I guess the beer base isn't hard to do anymore. They, those companies got it so nailed. It's just like a standard. They got some kind of, obviously, some kind of equipment. City Brewing in Memphis, La Crosse, Wisconsin, and in uh, Latrobe, Pennsylvania, obviously have this sort of equipment. And they do it in Rochester, New York, too, where they can take malt, corn syrup, and just bam, just like the song says, like ringing a bell, and then they got it. They got their clear, odorless, colorless beer base. They add their flavorings, whatever those happen to be, like with the four local black could be some kind of black lime puree. But see, I don't think it's a puree. I think it's some kind of like dehydrated black lime that's in bags, you know, huge bags or sacks, even a sack, you know, a sack. And it's dry like powder. And I think they dump it in a big plastic, look like a garbage can, which is basically what it is, but it's not dirty. And then they, they dump it in the brew kettle, you know, like the Nestle powdered milk flavoring. And I think that's what they do. I don't know that. But it seemed like a good guess, doesn't it?
then you add it to the liquid, the water, and it, it turns, you know, like it's supposed to be again. And then you blend it and then you filter it. You add your color in your green and blue and yellow, green. I'm sorry, you add your yellow and blue and make it look like antifreeze. You add so much sugar and corn syrup that you got fermentables to ferment it up to 14% alcohol. And you make this, this Frankenstein monster drink. That's probably more destructive than Frankenstein monster. And then people review it like I didn't be sick for 36 hours. All right, now, yeah, yum, antifreeze. Okay, well, that's it. So Heir to the Throne is a a failure, as expected. And uh, the Crown Royal Black wins, as expected. So thank you for watching this video production. We'll be back later today with the closeout for this round, this series, Crown Royal Black versus Gibson's Finest Rare, which actually is rare in Louisiana. Thanks for watching.